why hello. So a couple days ago, Miley Cyrus released a new album, and I plan on doing a video for it, but I was just gonna put it off until after I got back home. I'm in California. But then I said, no, Jason, get your shit together. You're always late. So after I hopped out of my plane at LAX with my dream in my cardigan, I got to listen. Welcome to a deep dive into Endless Summer Vacation by Miley Cyrus. I don't wanna go and talk too long. Miley Ray Cyrus signed with Columbia Records in 2021 after releasing three studio albums and an EP with Hollywood Records and four studio albums and an EP with RCA. Like, obviously, I know she's been around for a while, but I had no idea that she had that many projects. Maybe I'll do an every album video at some point. The first single, Flowers, was released on either January 12th or 13th of this year. I don't know why something like that is up for debate because it was literally a few months ago, but Wiki and some other websites say that it was the 12th. But I thought the whole thing was that she was releasing it on Liam's birthday, which is the 13th. And January 13th was also a Friday, which is when most artists usually release their music. You know, it's like a whole thing. So it was definitely the 13th. I guess that's the first time in history that Wiki was wrong. The song debuted at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 and has stayed in the top two since it came out. It's pretty obviously a hit because of the Easter eggs that people have found that relate the song to Liam Hemsworth, also known as her ex-husband. And the internet just loves drama. Endless Summer Vacation was released on March 10th, 2023 and debuted at number three on the Billboard Hot 100, which surprised me because I was expecting it to be at the top because there's so much hype surrounding the album, but... I guess we'll see how it does in the coming weeks. I don't think I need to dive into any of the controversies she's faced throughout her career because it's honestly irrelevant. And with every new record deal comes the chance at a new beginning for the artist. Just like you and I can establish a new beginning together if you subscribe. New videos every Friday. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive in. I'm gonna get this out of the way now. I don't like flowers. I think it's incredibly boring. I think it's worse than bad, but I'm not stupid. Obviously, like I said earlier, I get why it's popular. I just feel like it's a perfect example of drama selling the song because if you remove the drama from the song, it's really nothing special at all. I also was not really the biggest fan of Miley's voice because it's just so raspy, <clears throat> but it's not like it ruined the album for me. If anything, it made it stand out to me more because no one else today has a voice like hers. So if anything, I would want her to embrace that sound and make it her own. It just doesn't sound smooth, you know? I know all of that was kind of negative, but I do have good things to say about the songs as well. Regarding my thoughts on them individually, <clears throat> I'm sorry that you're jaded. It's a banger. Also a banger. Also also a banger. It's a I like the flow of the verses it works and I get what she's trying to do. I'm just not totally rocking with it, you know? Meh. It's too 80s, man. Love the production and the chorus. It's a banger. Wish I had one of those like stream decks where I could like play a sound and just be like me screaming, it's a banger. That'd be really funny. The drums go so hard on this, bro. Like, what the fuck? It's a banger. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a banger. It's fine, but it's just nothing crazy. Again, nothing crazy, but it, it's cool. It's so sad. Honestly, would be my favorite song on the album because it's just really, really sad. And it's probably the most meaningful song on the album, but we'll get more into why it's not my favorite a little later. I was talking to my brother the other day and he mentioned how all the albums that I've made videos for so far, I've liked, which is true. And I hate to break it to you guys, but this album, doesn't break that streak. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a woman-led pop heartbreak album. I really like the song Thousand Miles. It's definitely top three, maybe even my favorite. It's the only strong that feels country inspired and I hate country music, but it's different from the typical country pop songs that I feel like you would get from another white female country star turned pop artist because I feel like most of the time artists find a gray area in between country and pop music to operate. I think it's the case with a lot of mixed genres, even like pop rap and stuff like that. Whereas Thousand Miles kind of feels like black and white working together. Um, you know, kind of like a yin and yang. It makes sense to me. I don't know if I'm making any sense right now at all. I also think her vocals sound a little more gentle on this song. And honestly, as I kept listening to the album, the raspiness kind of grew on me. Because I think that that grit that she brings just adds to the album's edge. But I still just point blank don't like her voice. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. If you disagree, I'm, I'm really sorry. But it's just my opinion. Get over it. Oh, I forgot to mention that Brandi Carlisle's on this song, but she really barely does anything. Honestly, both features on the album are so forgettable, but it's not really a big deal. Like, they're fine. I don't mind them. The album stays pretty intact with this boss bitch, queen, slay, you know, I'm too good for you theme. And it really isn't until the last song on the album that I feel like it makes a deep cut, but even that song is more of a paper graze. Wonder Woman is about being a people pleaser and putting on a smile, but it just doesn't hit as hard as it should lyrically for what it is. For a final song for an artist that has eight studio albums, I was just expecting a little bit more. The chorus low-key almost got me though. She can't stop her eyes for well enough. 
But it could also be because I listened to it on a plane, and apparently you're more prone to cry on a plane. Something about the altitude and, like, the mild cry club. I, it's like a whole thing. I'd honestly say that's the only place that this album falls short for me. The production of the songs is all pretty fun, and the hooks are great, but I just think that these days, we're so used to getting a lot more out of our pop music content-wise, that this album feels like a letdown in that department. I decided not to get into any of the drama surrounding this album because while I do think that context is really important for understanding an album fully, I just feel like everyone places a lot of value in that stuff, and I'm definitely not guilty of that. Do we actually think that this album is also about you-know-who? Man, fuck this Joshua Bassett guy. Fuck Jake Gyllenhaal, let's go. But like, you guys know that clip that's all over TikTok of Miley and Liam on the red carpet, where Miley does something risque, and then Liam mutters something to her, and then people are like, oh my god, god he, he never, never accepted, accepted her for the woman she was. was. Oh, he never truly understood how great Miley was. Like, listen, bud. I know you think that you losers know Miley because you saw her grow up on Disney, but I guarantee you, the guy that was on and off with her for a decade, including two years where they were literally married, knows her better than you do. He knows what she likes to eat, when she goes to bed, what time of the day she usually takes a shit, all her deepest, darkest secrets. What do you know? That she's got a country twang? That she's a chick that's rocking kicks that's gotta be from out of town? Like, no. And something about divorce just feels a bit more uncomfortable for me to talk about because it's just so much more serious than a breakup when you're 19 years old. So yeah, no drama talk in the comments, please. Let's respect Hannah and Loki as individuals. But if you really need to get something off your chest, just shit on Jake Joe and also more. Fuck that guy. Anyways, back to the album. I really do like the album. I think it does a great job at setting a new status quo for her career. From what I can tell, after Hannah Montana, Miley's been kind of all over the place, just experimenting with different aesthetics for her works. And this feels like the result of that experimentation. Like she's back to quote unquote normal now, but she hasn't lost those sides of her. They're just sides now, not an entire persona. Instead of one thing taking up the entire album, you have sprinkles of all the things throughout. Kind of like Midnight's, you know? I feel like both Midnight's and ESV sort of showcase the results of everything that's shaped these artists throughout their career, all the trial and error that got them to this point. I guess my concluding thoughts would be that while Miley's unique voice and style inherently give this album a unique sound, it really doesn't bring anything crazy new to the table, which in turn just makes it less monumental than some of the other albums we've discussed. And I'm not trying to say that's sour and emails I can't send, are these legendary albums, but Miley's been in the game for a while. Like I said, this is her eighth studio album, so I guess I was just expecting a little more. Here's my top five songs. Jaded is just a slapper, man. I fucking love the background vocals where it's like, I could have taken your play, place. Fire, fire, absolute heat. I'm gonna give this album a solid 6.5, which might be a hot take, but another thing is there's really no nonsense on this album. You know, there's no one banger to rule them all, but let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments and also your favorite song on the album of course. I feel like this video is kind of short but I also just didn't have that much to say and I didn't want to stretch it out but I'm going back to school in a few days so hopefully we can see a return to status quo at least until the end of the semester. Thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed subscribe thumbs up it really helps a lot and I'll see you guys next week.